They say that there's no one more miserable than a Christian who's not trusting and obeying the Lord. This is just a small story of how a Christian can find joy in the midst of a dark period of time. Why is it that we as Christians are suffering depression and going through hard times in our minds when the church fathers were martyred and killed for their faith and they had joy and they rejoiced in the midst of persecution? They say you can often tell how cluttered your mind is by how cluttered your room is and if your room's not clean your mind's most likely not going to follow. Brokenness instills, but there's a light living inside of me. Why does that light feel like darkness? Why did Jesus warn me against this? A pastor once told me that God doesn't love you any less whenever you're being quiet. He loves you just as much as when you're shouting for joy and when you're happy and you're talking with Him. He doesn't see you any differently. He still loves you even in those quiet times just like a father still loves their child even when they aren't saying much. Sometimes it's necessary to suffer a bit in order that light can shine through. If you let the darkness overtake you, then the Holy Spirit is sure to shine a light and walk through the halls of your heart and shine a bright light and to take away the darkness. But first, you have to feel it. As you learn and as you grow, you begin to understand that you didn't save yourself. God saved you, and so you can't continue to save yourself. God has to be the one to save you. You begin to realize that God's word is your light, and if you neglect it, then you can do nothing, because Jesus is the vine. He's the word of God, became flesh for us. As you realize this, you begin to get rid of those bad thoughts that you had, the ones that told you that God hated you and he didn't love you or that you're too much of a failure, you begin to realize that he's merciful, he's gracious, he saved you by the blood of the lamb. As you begin to read the word, you start to have more and more joy in your life. You begin to put away those thoughts that told you you weren't enough or that you're judged already, but then you start to realize that Jesus said that the enemy was already judged and that the Holy Spirit was to convict the world of sin, but the believer to convict us of our righteousness. You see, we can never have righteousness in uh, certificates or in books or any of the things that the world would have us put our confidence in. We can never have righteousness in that. Our righteousness comes from Jesus Christ himself. See, Jesus knew that we were sinners and he knew that we were going to fall short in life. So he came down from heaven, God in the flesh, and he died for us. He bled out by the hand of his own people and the Romans and he gave his life so that we could have life. He loved us, the God of the universe. And if we'll just accept that and believe that he rose from the grave, he'll give us eternal life forever and ever with each other. He has plans to redeem us, to perfect us, to make us like him. And in that future, that's something that I can hope in. That's something that I can put my faith in. And I hope you can too. So thank you for watching this video. Like, subscribe, and comment if you want to talk about it.